having said that's my conclusion, now we're going to take a look at these 10 comparisons, or 10 areas of comparison, and see how both Thesis and Genesis stack up with each other. In this case, we'll start off with Thesis. Thesis is really intended, and we're going to talk about their intended use first. Thesis is really intended to be used alone, right? It's not intended to be customized with a child theme. It was designed and developed to be customized in and of itself. The first level of customization, of course, is the hundreds of theme options that are available to you with Thesis. But then it has a system for adding code snippets that are separate from the theme itself. And so that's really how Thesis is intended to be used. And if you're familiar with Thesis, this is going to be very familiar to you. Right? These are the two sites that I'm, that I'm using for this comparison. One is sbywhfinal.byobtutorial.com. This is a Thesis site that I developed for the class that I just finished teaching here a month ago. And then sbywhfinalagency.byobgenesis.com. This is the demonstration site that I developed for Genesis for the class that I'm teaching right now. And I'm going to use, I'm going to refer to these two sites repeatedly throughout the, this uh, seminar. Each of these sites is essentially identical. That is, they have all the same content, the same images, the same number of pages, the same organization. They differ in, this is a customized version of the agency child theme for Genesis. And this is Thesis, customized using my BYOB Thesis plugins. So in Thesis, you have literally hundreds of, of settings that, inside of design options, that you can use to configure the appearance of your site, you know, both the layout and colors and fonts and organization and there's all kinds of things that you can set using Thesis design options and the way Thesis is created is it's expecting you to use these options to create your site. However, if you've done that, you know that these options only take you so far and by the time you get finished with them, what you really want to do is, you know, make a few little changes here and there and the thesis intention is that you use this custom file editor to add little bits of little snippets of code to your custom CSS file or to your custom functions PHP file to augment that design that you end up with your in thesis design options. And that's thesis's intended use case. On the other hand, the Genesis intended use case, Genesis is intended to be used with a child theme. Now, if you don't know what a child theme is, a child theme is essentially a theme that augments or changes another theme. Uh, Thesis came up with its system of customizing themes uh, a fair bit before WordPress came up with this child theme system. And the child theme is WordPress's way of trying to solve the same problem that Thesis does with the custom folder and custom CSS and custom functions PHP files. WordPress came up with a system that allows you to create a child theme and it was originally imagined as a way to make minor modifications to an existing theme. So if you were using a theme and you wanted to change a font style or a font color or something like that, rather than simply hacking the themes files, what you would do is create a child theme that had those minimal changes. And then what WordPress does is it reads the child theme first, gets all the information it needs from that, and then if there's anything else it needs, it goes to the parent theme and gets all the rest of what it needs from the parent theme. And so the child theme takes precedence over the parent theme, but the child theme doesn't operate properly without the parent theme. And that's that child theme parent theme relationship. And if you want a more thorough explanation of that, I recommend that you come back here to the series that I'm teaching. And this video I just recorded last night, so it's not actually available for viewing right now. But in in lesson six of build a professional website using Genesis and WordPress. 
in the next day or so. This will be there. I have a, a whole section in lesson six on what a child theme is and how child themes relate to parent themes and that sort of thing. And so there's a more thorough explanation of that here in this second video, lesson six of build a professional website using Genesis and WordPress. Okay. Genesis is intended to be used with a child theme. There is no real possibility for customizing Genesis's appearance without using the child theme. And really all customization is done using the child theme. So the intended use is not really to use Genesis as is. Genesis is intended to be used as is with a child theme added to it. Thesis is intended to be used as is and if you don't like the range of choices in its design options then it's got a system for adding code snippets that that allow you to make minor modifications to that. Okay, number two, comparing via child themes. Now, we'll start with Genesis in this case. Genesis has a very large set of well-designed, mature child themes. It has nearly 40 of them on the Studio Press site itself, which are all supported by inside their forum. And then I've seen a site that lists another 100 or so that are available via you know, a variety of personal and private websites. So there's a quite a large selection of child themes available. And those child themes are, are very mature. They're very well developed. The child themes follow the WordPress child theme system exactly. So there's, if you already know how child themes work in WordPress, you know how child themes work in, in Genesis because it follows that system exactly. And a large number of those child themes are, are well supported in the forum. And it has several responsive child themes. So if we come over to Studio Press for just a moment. Studio Press is the place where Genesis is created and where you can purchase it. Studio Press has this very large selection of child themes that you can simply add to the Genesis theme itself. And the child theme that I'm using in the course is this agency child theme. And if you take a look at the theme demo, you know, you can see there are some reasonably strong similarities between this demonstration site, which is based on that child theme, and this child theme. And yet, if you didn't really know that's what you were looking for, you wouldn't see the similarity. Nevertheless, there are lots of child themes that are in this. And in fact, these child themes are all, all these child themes as you can see on Studio Press, are all supported in the Genesis forums. And so here you can see all of their child themes with question and answer sections on the forums. And in fact, there is a section of child themes that are called community child themes. And those are themes that were not actually written by Studio Press, but are created by the community. And even those themes are supported on the child themes forum. So, or on the Studio Press forum. So there's very good support for the child themes. On the other hand, Thesis has uh, quite a bit fewer choices. And mostly, those choices are skins, not child themes. And I'm not going to really talk about the difference between a skin and a child theme. My guess is that the whole concept of skin three years from now is non-existent in terms in WordPress. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, there were a couple of competing ideas about how to make changing a theme upgradable. That is, how somebody can customize a theme so that it meets exactly what they want and still be able to upgrade the underlying theme without losing the changes that they made. And Thesis' solution to that was the custom folder with custom functions PHP and custom CSS. And Thesis stores all of your customizations inside of that folder. The WordPress then came up with this concept of and that's essentially what we mean by a skin. The concept of skin has developed a little further because 
thesis up until 1.84 didn't actually support child themes. And so since there were skin authors who wanted to be able to easily port their skin to thesis and they want people to be able to buy it and easily install it, they created this thing that they called skins. But I'm guessing that skins doesn't skins aren't going to exist for very much longer and that you're either going to have the standard thesis customization for a site or you're going to have child themes. Historically, there was no universally method of creating a skin. And so each skin author was left to themselves to develop their own method of developing a skin. And so, which ended up being that, you know, every skin author did it differently. And there was really no standardized system for doing it. Which is kind of problematic for a skin user because if you were using one skin for a while and then decided you wanted to switch to another skin, you had to learn that skin system in order to make that switch. And that all changed with Thesis 1.84. Thesis 1.84 introduces full support for the WordPress child theme system and you can now create a child theme and install a child theme for Thesis in exactly the same way you would do it for WordPress. But there's actually uh, not very many examples of that available currently. And none of them are supported on the DIY themes forums. Right, Whatever support there is for those child themes happens at the theme author site and some of them are undoubtedly great at support and some of them are probably not great at support. It, it's not as reliable. And then finally there's very little support for responsive child themes. Now I should, I forgot to mention that Genesis has many responsive child themes and in fact this is a good example of a responsive child theme. A responsive design is a design that responds to the size of the browser window that's viewing it. And so you can see that as I move this, what we see changes, right? And the page is never cut off. It just changes from, you know, one, three columns to one thing stack and all that sort of stuff. And if we go to a different page, actually, where we go to our About Us page, you know, you can see that the sidebar drops down now, down below, and this whole thing just gradually smaller and smaller, although the font all stays readable. And this is what's called a responsive theme. If you compare that for a moment to, let's see, where'd my, uh, well, if you compare that to BYLB website, that's a great comparison because BYLB website is not responsive. I do have lots of mobile content, but as soon as you get smaller, you know, it just cuts it off, right? And so what happens is mobile devices scale it. Well, with a responsive theme, it doesn't have to scale. What happens is the CSS changes and it changes to respond to the browser window, which is, I think, a very good thing in this highly mobile context. Well, there is uh, one notable, pardon me, Oops, I'm not quite sure how that happened. And so anyway, Genesis has a number of responsive child themes available to it. And Thesis, there's really only one that I know of, of note. And, and that is the reactive theme from themedy.com, T-H-E-M-E-D-Y.com. This is a site developed by a guy named Mark Hodder, who I don't know personally, but who does uh, really excellent work. And he has created this theme called Reactive, which is a mobile responsive theme that actually works in both Thesis and Genesis. Whoops, I'm grabbing the wrong thing again. Let's see if I, there we go. So you can see what happens, you know, it just, shrinks itself and readjusts itself for the width of the device. This is really the one good example of a uh, theme in, of a child theme in thesis that is responsive. There is a, I'm starting to teach a class on May 10th on creating a responsive child theme. And while 
this responsive child theme is not completed yet. Uh, what is it? It is thesis responsive child theme dot com. This is the one I'm developing as the demonstration site for this course. This is based off of an open source design that show you the main point of showing you this. This is this is a work in progress. It's not actually ready yet, but this is a thesis site that is responsive. Well, it is a thesis site that was responsive <laughs> for whatever reason. I don't know why it isn't responding now. I'll cut that out of this presentation, but this will be a responsive site that, and I guess to the, more to the point, the point I'm trying to make about it is I will be teaching a course in how to create a mobile responsive site or a mobile responsive child theme for thesis. And this is, this is my working example that I'm working on at the moment. Okay. So, however, to date, there's little res support for responsive child themes.